Hello and welcome back to the lecture on business econometrics. In this lecture, we will cover the concept of power of a test. Now, power of a test is a concept that is very important when it comes to hypothesis testing and we need to decide whether to accept or reject the null uh, alternative hypothesis. Now, power of a test could be sort of conceived as the probability of making a correct decision. Probability of correct decision of a correct decision when given your null is false. Null is false. So it means let's say let's say we actually impart training to the students of VGSOM or Python training and the null hypothesis would be that there is no status quo change. So H0 is no impact of training, impact of training and H1 is impact of training. There is some positive impact of training. Let's say it's a one-sided test, no impact of training and H1 is or HA is a, that is a positive impact of training. Now, if I think it in terms of the power of a test, I would say probability of correct decision, probability that I could identify the positive impact of training given that there is a positive impact of training, right? So essentially, we also say power is uh, 1 minus type 2 error. So if we, if we uh, go back to the definition of type 2 error, type 2 error would be type 2 error is, if you re re recall it correctly, type 2 error is that type 2 we basically deal with the false negatives, right? So essentially we wrongly identify something as negative when the in reality that is positive, right? So for example, uh, we wrongly identified that there is no impact of training. So we have wrongly identified it as negative, whereas th there is a true impact, right? So we have basically uh, found that there is no status quo change, whereas there is status quo change, right? So uh, we have given example of, uh, you know, like for example, um, say we say no COVID, no COVID or say no diamond, no diamond where there is really COVID or say we say that no training impact where there is really a training impact right or or say no theft where, or people are not um, thief where there is people are really thieves I mean, yeah basically no thief so these are the cases where they are where people are actually where there is COVID or diamond or there is training impact, impact and so forth in reality, let's say, in reality, let's say. So these are the cases of type 2 error and I claim that type 2 error, a power of a test is 1 minus type 2 error. So if I uh, try to actually see that, so type 2 error is essentially Type 2 error is essentially, type 2 error is, um, essentially, um, we wrongly identify something as negative when in reality that is positive. So power we can say type 2 error, 1 minus type 2 error is power. So it is going to be. the probability of rejecting of rejecting the null the null when in fact when in fact the null is false the null is false right null is false Okay, so that's basically the idea of power. Okay, so you are basically correctly identifying the cases when the null is false. Okay, so there are two things you are correctly identifying, and basically we are identifying those cases uh, where the null is false. So uh, essentially, uh, 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 unlike the type one error, when you are talking about type two error, 
and uh, we are basically talking about two different distributions because we are talking about the alternative hypothesis here so null hypothesis it has a distribution and the moment i bring in another uh, or hypothesis which is alternative hypothesis it means that i'm considering the population the population the null and alternative hypothesis population they are different so basically the samples drawn from these two distributions their characteristics are going to be different so basically when I infer the population characteristics using those samples, we are going to get different population characteristics. So this one, the null hypothesis one, and the popular uh, the, on the alternative hypothesis one, they have they are actually in a sense they are actually drawn from different populations. So to to give a better example, like to kind of uh, explain this, so the students who get Python training, so they constitute a different population now. Okay. Uh, and the students who do not get a python training they are here right so that's another population or the the diamond is a different population than stones stone is this population whereas diamond is this population or the people who are not thieves this is that pop this population and people who are thieves this is this population right so they're basically different populations so the moment you identify these populations so you, you have an alternative hypothesis so we are basically talking about two distributions so that's what you need to remember and if let's say it has a mean mu zero and mu a for example uh, now i have to what i have to uh, understand from here is that uh, is after the training or after say you know uh, let's say after the training those who have gone through the training actually constitute a different population or not so that's what i have to understand so if the training has no impact so let's say we, we just take the training example if the training does not have any impact so let's say this training has an impact, has impact, but if the training does not have any impact, what will happen is that my yellow distribution and the green distribution, they will sort of, they will sort of coincide because, you know, the population are basically going to remain same. The, the every characteristics are going to remain same. So let me write down training, say, so I'll write mu zero equal to mu a. What I'll write is that the training has no impact, has no impact, right? Now, now what we do when we analyze the power of a test is simply we try to see uh, if the difference between these two distribution is actually significant or not. And that we do with a uh, a mm, uh, certain procedure and I'm going to show you that. So what we will do here is say we take the, let's say from the previous one, I will take certain samples from each distribution, okay. Say uh, people who have gone through training, I take this information, uh, these samples and people who, so who does not have gone through training, I take this the yellow distribution and people who have gone through training, let's say this is my green distribution. So I take these observations here, okay. And I, what I do is I know that what I have to do, I have to calculate the p value, okay. And I take these uh, observations between uh, from these two distributions, and I see if the mean, if the mean, if the mean of these two distributions, uh, the difference between the two means, if the difference between the two means, if we take and the corresponding p value, is actually you know whatever is a greater or lower than 0 0.05 let's say that's our decision criteria okay so whenever we do uh, calculate this um, power of a test we always have to define the alpha let's say we'll take alpha equal to 0 0.05 and we say this is a one-sided test okay one-sided test all right um, now that is one case. So let's say in here we have seen that let's say uh, in this particular case I have seen p to be um, less than 0 0.05. So we are we will think that okay these two dis do, these two distributions are different. Now that is one observation, right? So you have to take uh, um, n number of observation to come to this conclusion. So let's say if I just keep on plotting. So let's say this is my case one, and I'll take case two, case three let's say case 4 and let's say I take up to case 10 and what I find is that in each case I you know take these observations here let me just 
plot like this randomly and this is here and let's have this yellow dots here let's say this is really far this is really far this is really away let's say this one is close and this one is let's say again very far okay so if i take the mean of all these samples so i get this 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 these are very close i get this i get some of like this okay and let's say the p value corresponding to this is less than 0 0.05 this is less than 0 0.5 but this one is actually greater than this 0 0.05 this one is actually less than 0 0.05 now since there are n number of cases since there are so many cases i will see this one is actually violating this p value is actually violating but the rest of the p values are suggesting oops sorry the rest of the p values are suggesting that um, let me not do that let me actually not do that so the rest of the p values are suggesting that these two distributions are different now the power of it is what it does is it is actually if i have say let's say there are 10 such observations and 8 so let's say out of this 10 observations 10 observations questions and uh, eight suggesting difference eight, eight suggesting that the eight suggesting the distributions are different two suggesting distributions are same eight suggesting distributions are different two suggesting distributions are same now what statistical power would do is that um, so in eight cases we are able to reject so we are able to reject the null hypothesis uh, in eight cases okay and in two cases we are unable to uh, reject the null hypothesis so it is the uh, power essentially we are able to we are assuming that these two distributions are different we are assuming that uh, the two uh, basically there is an impact of uh, the training and if that is so then we are able to identify 8 out of 10 cases correctly okay correctly we can identify and the power of test is going to be 0.8 because we are able to identify 8 out of 10 cases now a very important question will come is that well uh, how did i know in the first place how in the first place in the first place i know eight are correct eight are correct yes my uh, you know sort of uh, specification the way i have uh, you know the, my, my samples are showing that eight correct out of ten but uh, how would i know that these eight are correct whereas these two are false i mean it could have it might have so happened that these two are correct and eight are false right so how would i know that the eight are correct so what is where is the sanctity in this claim now to actually talk about that it actually comes from the design how we are actually designing the whole power thing and how we are actually uh, designing the sample size and uh, some of the other uh, criteria which we are going to talk about so those are kind of giving a sanctity to the whole thing called power of a test, right? Now, we'll talk about that. Um, so a couple of things about uh, power, but uh, in, this, in this lecture, let me just finish here and I will talk about a couple of uh, characteristics about the power and uh, how actually you can design the power of a test. Thank you.